Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownload Blog. This is the iPod Touch first generation, a device that came out in 2007, which as of 2024 will be 17 years ago, which is a really long time ago in technology. I've got three of these devices and all still power on and actually work surprisingly well. In this video, I wanna go over these devices 17 years later, including some of their early history and how they still work today. Let's get started. So first off, the basic history. These were announced in September of 2007, and you can still watch the keynote on YouTube. I'll link them below. They're really interesting, and I would recommend checking them out. It's only 15 minutes to watch the whole keynote for the iPod Touch first generation. But just a few months earlier that year, in January, Apple had announced the very first iPhone, and they wanted to bring that technology to the iPod. Of course, the first iPhone had been revolutionary in Steve Jobs' language for combining the phone, the iPod, and the internet device, but the iPod hadn't received that internet capability or that touchscreen. So this was the solution to it. The same 3.5 inch display, but a thinner body with a little bit more storage instead of four or eight gigabytes with the iPhone, this was going to be eight or 16 gigabytes, and it was going to be several hundred dollars cheaper and its main focus was still music, so you could have more music, but they also added Wi-Fi to it with the antenna so that you could have Safari and Maps, and they shipped the YouTube app on it. Now, this was still running iPhone OS 1, so it didn't have the App Store when it shipped, and that wouldn't be for a couple years until it had an App Store at all. Today, I have a bunch of games still downloaded on here from years ago, and while I can't seem to be able to download anything from the App Store, I can still play a lot of these games and open up a lot of these apps without any problems. And I can certainly still search Google without any issues, although loading websites is another question. So let's go ahead and take a walk through, through the hardware and software of this device and see how it holds up 17 years later. And it's pretty sweet. One thing you'll definitely notice is just how dirty these things got. It is a totally shiny metal back and the, all three of mine are completely scratched to shreds basically with lots of fingerprints and scuffs these are just dirty devices after all these years so i've got a few different ipods that i can show you here i wanted to just show you the different experiences with them this one i find interesting because it is basically bursting at the seam as you can see the display is separating from the body and it looks like the battery is kind of bursting out the back. I can feel the hump on the back. It's not warm. It's not heating up or anything, uh, but the screen is definitely coming off. <laughs> I think as we're speaking, it's getting worse and you can see that kind of dead spot in the display right there. And whenever I put any pressure on the back of the iPod, you can see that. So this is just uh, an iPod certainly on its last legs, which is too bad. So now I wanna give you a little bit of a walk through through these devices. So they're both running iOS 3.1.3, or I guess at this point it would really be iPhone OS 3.1.3. I believe this is the latest software that they can get. Now on the home screen, we have Safari, Calendar, Mail, and Contacts, as well as YouTube, Stocks, Maps, Weather, Clock, Calculator, Notes, Settings, App Store, and then Music, Videos, Photos, and iTunes at the bottom. And then there are some installed games on this one as well, which we'll take a look at. Okay, so we'll go ahead and open up Safari, give you a look at what this is like. It actually still works pretty well. Now there's some things that won't load, so I can put in I download blog. I can search for that. And as you can see, it's actually fairly quick, but when I click on it, most websites just aren't supported anymore. It just won't work. But you can search things like Bengals. And that still works, no problem. See what calendar looks like. Mail. Contacts. It looks like this must have been my iPod at one point in time. There's the YouTube app, which is pretty cool to look back at the fact that these used to ship with YouTube before Apple kind of kicked that off and told Google to develop their own app. But yeah, this was back in the day. You see nothing's loading, I'm not sure exactly why. The one thing I found surprising is that Maps still works really well. Now, of course, this doesn't have cellular, so anything that you pull up will have to be kind of looked at before you leave for your destination. 
but it'll still give you turn by turn uh, for walking or driving. It'll give you satellite um, or transit directions. It works surprisingly well. We have the old weather app. This hasn't updated since New Year's 1999. Apparently this was the weather then. We see the clock app. And while the iPod didn't have speakers, you could still use the kind of basically tiny built-in speaker, uh, not for music, but for things like this, timers, alarms, alerts, and notifications. You see the stopwatch, alarm, and world clock. And it wasn't until later iPods that you actually had built-in speakers. Now this is one of the cooler apps to look back at. You can see it's actually a notepad, which is pretty sweet. We can go through the settings. You can see up top you have Wi-Fi, brightness, and you only have a few options. So there's general. This is where you change the wallpaper, and you can see the stock wallpaper is on here. Of course, the old Apple ads for the music and iPod. The Mona Lisa, Starry Night, and some other artwork. So some of these you may remember. Here are your sounds. So mail, calendar, lock sounds, and keyboard clicks. So these are the only ways you could really use the speaker. Auto lock, restrictions, passcode, home. Double click of the home button could do a few things. So take you to the iPod or the music player. Obviously there was no multitasking at this point. All right, so we'll go back into music. And you can see it's just the five tab design that Apple talked about on stage, playlists, artists, songs, albums, and more. And you see that it won't make any sound until you plug in earphones. You see videos, photos. So you have screenshots here. And any images I downloaded from the internet or from mail. And then iTunes. And then some apps I downloaded. So I'll go ahead and pull up Fruit Ninja here. And we'll just play this just to see how it works. And I was actually surprised to see that it did work really pretty well. So all in all, I am surprised at how well this iPod holds up all these years later with all of these games and just the internet in general. Certainly there's a lot of functions that don't work, but I hope you enjoyed this look at the iPod Touch first generation.